Before we do tackle the variance command, let's test that theory. We, we like talking about theory, but we'd much rather see it in action. What would happen right now then to our topology table and our route table if, say, serial, uh, router 2 was no longer even a neighbor over the 172.12.123.0 slash 24 network, the frame? Let's find out. That's what's fun about a lab. You just dig right in. So let's go. Let's try conf t. And we're going to do a no network, 172.12.123.0. And that adjacency goes down pretty fast once you do a no network. So let's go up to router 1. And we verify that neighbor relationship is gone. Now, let's look at the topology table. And all of a sudden, this has really changed. And you can see that for router 2's loopback, the successor is now 123.3, the next top IP address. It's that path. So that changed all of a sudden. And let's go ahead and see if we can still ping 2222. And we can. So just that quickly, the feasible successor was promoted to successor, and we still have connectivity. Now, I can still also ping 172.12.23.0 slash 27. Uh, I can ping one of the hosts on there. No problem at all. But notice now that we only have one successor because that other path is gone. So I'm going to go ahead during the break and add that network statement back. As a matter of fact, let's do it right now. It shouldn't take, it shouldn't take long to do that at all. If I can stop doing conf t, i got to cut back on the espressos. Router, EIGRP100. Let's do a page up. And a control A, get rid of that no. We should get our adjacency back pretty quickly, and we do. Let's see if our routing table is already caught up. And you can see just that quickly, it's already gone right back to using its previous successor to get to router 2's loop back. You'll see that both of our paths to 172.12.23.0 slash 27 are back in the table. And one more thing. Here's our topology table, and it now looks exactly the same as it did originally. There are two successors for 172.12.23.0, one success for, successor for each of the loopbacks, but now we're using 123.2 as the next hop to reach router 2's loopback. So that's how quickly EIGRP reacts to a, a lost neighbor relationship. You know, bang, by the time we got up there and looked at router 1, it was already using another path because the backup path was calculated in advance. And I know someone out there is thinking, well, what happens if you don't have any backup paths calculated in advance? We are definitely going to hit that later in this particular section. But in the very next video, we're going to see how to bring in these paths that have a good metric, you know, just a little higher than, than the successor. We're going to learn how to bring our feasible successors into the routing table and use them for unequal cost load balancing on the very next video. See you there.